The self-described oldest civil liberties organization in U.S. history was founded in the wake of the Civil War. In 1871, Union officers, concerned by the poor marksmanship they had witnessed in battle, formed the NRA to train young men how to shoot better. By 1903, the NRA promoted shooting as a sport at colleges and universities and later created a summer youth camp. Before World War I, the NRA helped arm and train civilians. Before World War II, the NRA offered its ranges to the military for marksmanship courses. During the interwar years, after the repeal of Prohibition, the NRA became active in politics. In 1934, Congress moved to regulate guns for the first time, particularly those used by gangsters like Al Capone. The NRA, through its new Legislative Affairs Division and new magazine, The American Rifleman, spurred a letter-writing campaign to limit proposed gun restrictions. The final bill banned machine guns and sawed off shotguns. After the assassination of President Kennedy by Lee Harvey Oswald, who bought his gun through an ad in The American Rifleman, Congress tried to end mail-order gun sales. The bill languished until 1968, after the killings of Martin Luther King and Robert Kennedy. The Gun Control Act of 1968 put new limits on firearm sales, regulating who could buy and sell them. The NRA's leadership expressed ambivalent support for the bill, but in the 1970s, with crime on the rise, a rift developed within the organization between those who wanted to focus on training, hunting, and outdoorsmanship, and members who wanted to take a hard line on Second Amendment rights. The hardliners won. In 1980, the NRA endorsed, for the first time, a presidential candidate, Ronald Reagan. Reagan was nearly killed in an assassination attempt in 1981. His press secretary, James Brady, who was also shot, became permanently disabled. In 1983, Reagan became the first American president to address the NRA. It's a nasty truth, but those who seek to inflict harm are not phased by gun control laws. In the mid-1980s, the organization aggressively courted new members. You can become a part of this great heritage simply by calling now. But despite their growing power, in 1993, Congress passed, over NRA objections, the Brady Act, requiring federal background checks on firearm purchases. The group also opposed the assault weapons ban, which the president signed the following year. In 2000, NRA president and former actor Charleston Heston vowed then-presidential candidate Al Gore could only take his Second Amendment rights from my cold, dead hands. In 2001, in a Fortune magazine survey, lawmakers and congressional staffers considered NRA America's most influential lobbying group. And with President Bush taking power, no new federal challenges to gun rights emerged. In 2004, the assault weapons ban expired and wasn't renewed. In the last decade, the number of guns in America swelled to 300 million, and the NRA counted its membership total at 4 million. In 2012, the NRA spent a grand total of $19 million on the federal election. Now, national outrage over a gun massacre killing 20 elementary school children and six adults. It comes on top of a rash of other mass casualty attacks in recent years. Columbine, 15 dead. Virginia Tech, 33 dead. Aurora, Colorado, 13 dead. With the majority of Americans supporting new restrictions on firearms, President Obama calls for self-reflection by NRA members and pledges to fight for new gun control legislation. Jason Bellini, The Wall Street Journal, New York.